What's going on everybody? Alonzo Oriana here back on Visual Street Talk and we're sitting here with Jacqueline Carpenter, CEO and founder, not founder, her father was a founder, but CEO of Ideal uh, Restoration, a uh, company that focuses on environmental cleanup and I will let her take it from here and tell us a little bit more about what you guys are doing. Yeah, thanks for having me Alonzo. Appreciate it. I have been inundated with questions and phone calls and doing webinars and trainings on this topic. Um, there's a lot of information out there that can be confusing, so I want to help lay it out as clearly as possible. Yeah. I've been running the company for about 15 years. We're an emergency service water damage cleanup company, but a huge portion of what we do is related to viral decontamination, cleaning up bacteria, uh, mold remediation, asbestos abatement. All of those services include cleaning up, destroying, getting rid of, deactivating an invisible contaminant. Invisible. Invisible. Invisible contaminants. Yes. And so how do you guys see them? How do we know they're there? Is it preventative and once there's an outbreak? Are you on both sides? We typically respond once there's a problem. Got it. So once there's a problem, we're there. We understand how the contaminant behaves. For example, if it's a mold spore floating in the air, we know where it's going to land, where it's going to hang out, where it's going to thrive. If it's a virus, we know where it would also land, hang out, and thrive. Uh, we know the lifespans. We know how to properly deactivate it or kill it, uh, what proper chemicals to use, the procedures. We really rely on our procedures. You imagine a custodian or a janitorial company is going through a building to clean it. Mm -hmm. He's focused on appearance. Right. What we're doing, you can almost call it forensic cleaning. So you guys out there with like a black light? We're, we're, we don't use a black light, but, but we, there, are more there, is, there is testing done uh, to, to verify that the work we did was, was well, good enough. How did you get into this side of the business? You know, because when your father started the company, you guys were doing carpets and grew from there. Mm -hmm. And at what point did you pivot and see that there was a need for this? Sure. I saw this coming probably almost 10 years ago. Uh, even back then, I started heavily investing in equipment and training. Mm -hmm. We started to transition our clients to the healthcare side, and we were really pursuing healthcare work. Uh, these viruses and bacteria have been plaguing hospitals and healthcare centers uh, for a very long time. Yeah. And so we've been in these facilities making sure that they stay at bay, that we're able to get rid of them. Uh, I do think it's a kind of a biological level of, of war between humans wow. and these microbes. Yep. They're trying to survive, they're getting stronger and smarter, and we keep trying to kill them and get rid of them, and um, the battle continues. Yeah. So there's a difference between like good germs and bad germs, and there's a difference between germs and viruses, yeah. right, in which yeah. we'll get into that. Um, but, you know, just a little, you know, uh, up until coronavirus or, um, What's, what's the professional? What COVID-19. COVID-19. Um, were you already seeing uh, more companies wanting your services? Mostly uh, at, at risk buildings are in need of our level of cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly healthcare facilities, people who have lower immune systems. That's where they're more sus susceptible. You mentioned all these other germs and viruses or bacteria. We're fighting the battle every day. We mm -hmm. just don't know it. Our, our immune system is hard at work, yep. keeping us functioning and, and upright and safe walking through our day, and it's battling nonstop. So our immune systems as humans is actually pretty good for like the oh, more, the it's healthy. Amazing. It's kind of incredible, right? Absolutely. Piece of science that we are. And we have to take care of ourselves and our bodies and our stress level and sleeping so that our immune system stays strong. Got it. So for the entrepreneurs out there that we think that we shouldn't sleep and just be around the clock, that's actually detrimental to to us staying healthy, right? Yeah. I noticed I live and work in San Francisco, so when I fly to the East Coast for work, the meetings always start at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I arrive there, I have a hard time falling asleep. My alarm clock goes off at 3 a.m. San mm -hmm. Francisco time, and I power through that day. And by the end of the day, I'm tired. Anyway, I go through this three-day just nonstop work and I get on the plane to come home and without fail I get sick yeah, wow. but you put me on vacation somewhere I travel a lot for vacation on planes yep. and I never get sick white sandy beaches in uh, mm. clear blue waters they're good for the immune system yeah what about those little <laughs> drinks with the the umbrellas, umbrellas they might help always <laughs> but essentially you're rested you're calm you're not stressed out you're sleeping well right. your immune system's at full throttle sure 
So we all we can't underestimate taking care of our body and sleeping well during a challenging time like this. Yeah. Uh, I believe we're I believe we're in day two. Yesterday was day one, which was March eleventh, twenty twenty, and there, uh, you know, basketball games were being canceled, and so uh, Tom Hanks, uh, you know, and his wife uh, were tested positive. I think it kind of uh, shined an even bigger light. Anything that's out of the states, uh, you know, because Italy's shut down, China shut down. Uh, they were like, mm, it's far away. That won't happen here. It'll maybe mm -hmm. be different. It's hitting home right now, and it's freezing a lot of people, including businesses, financial firms, and all kinds of businesses. So I, I know you're you're really busy and, and you're getting after it. And because you've been doing it for a long time, you're ahead of the game. Exactly. Um, I want ja Jacqueline to really to go through her presentation, and we'll have questions. Uh, but really, things that we should be doing, even without coronavirus, but things especially with coronavirus mm -hmm. and what we know so far. Um, so I'm gonna let you take it from here. Thank you, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Um, I've been heavily training my team at Ideal. I have about 50 employees and I'm knowingly sending my team into contaminated buildings. So the level of health and protection is really through the roof with us. Uh, we've been training on this for probably over 45 days. Wow. And it's been nonstop repeating information to really start helping them change their thinking and their behavior and um, getting in there and getting the space safe and back in use. Wow. So one of the biggest problems today, obviously, is we share all these surfaces. These buildings say, let's just take one of the high rises in the city or the Salesforce Tower. Yep. Imagine how many people go in and out of those elevators, through in and out of those front doors each day. And so these high touch surfaces are shared. We have more common shared surface than ever before in history, let alone our population and the density of our cities. Right. Uh, but we should also know, we should also be aware and be educated on how these viruses transfer, bacteria, how they get into our body. This problem's not going to go away. It's coronavirus, COVID-19 right now. Um, we'll have another outbreak mm -hmm. of something, whether it's a year, two years, or 10 years. It, it, just at that point, you know, we've, it, it, it's like a trend. Every few years, something's coming up and we're dealing with it. In our lifetime, I don't ever remember dealing with anything like this mm -hmm. and the market's changing the way they are today the business is being closed people there's a real fear mm -hmm. uh toilet paper being running out mm -hmm. it was a joke last week now it's not yeah um so uh, there are I, I you know i had a conversation with you early this morning and it made me feel better yeah. um and i'm not a person that worries and you know but i want to know some facts and i want to I want to have options and just kind of be on offense instead. Yeah. So I really appreciate you coming out and Absolutely. looking forward to this. And I'll mention too, you know, the Asian countries, they've been dealing with this. Um, they're experts. That's why they're in those little paper masks. It's because they know what to do. They're conscientious. They're trying not to po possibly spread their own germs, right. whether or not they're infected themselves. Right. Um, you mentioned our lifetimes. We've seen Ebola. We've seen MRSA. We've seen SARS. It just hasn't been in our backyard. Right. That's the difference. And now we're freaking out. Yeah. So. All right. So, so I'd also like to touch just viruses and bacteria. They're invisible to the, the naked eye. They're on our hands. They're on surfaces. We're not going to see them. Therefore, we have to understand how they behave and where they go and how they get transferred from surface to, to surface or even inside of your body. Uh, the reason that these viruses last so long indoors is because it's a controlled environment inside. We usually keep the thermostat set between maybe a five, seven degree delta between the day and the evening. It doesn't change too much. Got it. Human bodies are in there. It's warm, it's moist. These are all conducive to survival yeah. for these, vi these viruses. When I paid for a parking meter this morning in San Francisco and I was pushing the button on my meter, I wasn't too worried about that button because it's outdoors, it's exposed to more elements. It goes through a lot more um, a challenging environment for the virus to survive. Okay, so most viruses, they would like that even keel. Like, I mean, here in the room, it's kind of warm today. It's in the 70s probably, but our bodies are 98 and at a constant 98, so got yeah. it. Yeah, and so the flu, some people think the flu only um, is like a winter virus. It's not. It's mm -hmm. around all year long, but it spikes in the winter because everyone's indoors. Because they're indoors, wow, yeah. that's... Because it's cold outside, so people now are always indoors, they're closing their windows, they're keeping everything nice and airtight, and so it can really thrive inside. So let me ask you this, say like a lot of athletes, they take ice baths, 
right? After mm-hmm. games, after practice, before, after. Is that some that seems like it's really helpful for that reason alone because you're changing your body uh, mm-hmm. uh, temperatures? Sure, I'm talking about a virus living on a surface. Um, we're not going to kill or um, deactivate any virus that is in our body by maybe being out in the sun, which would normally be difficult for a virus to f- survive during, under direct sunlight, mm-hmm. or in a cold or hot temperature, because it's already in our body and it's already reproducing. Our body is the host. It is the living environment, and it's warm and it's moist, and it's, it's loving being in there. Got it. So I just want, just for a note to bring this back around here, is that these viruses aren't going to survive as long outdoor. Okay. As they do inside. So should we should be spending more time outdoors? Yeah. Next Go enjoy it. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful out the park. there. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's it's these indoor environments that are most challenging for disinfecting. So viruses need a host in order to reproduce. So if if I cough here on the table and I have an invisible droplet that falls out of my mouth and lands on your table, that virus can live on that surface, but it won't reproduce. Hmm. Bacteria can reproduce outside of a host. Okay. Okay. Got it. So you've got one virus sitting there. Um, usually, if you cough, you have multiple droplets, so you probably have multiple out. Um, but it needs a host in order to really reproduce. And so we're trying to stop it from going into the host, which is our body. So regular germs can reproduce outside of the human body. Viruses cannot. But if I touch that and I bring it onto me, then it has another host there the reproduction happens. Exactly. It it. needs to be inside of an animal or a human to start reproducing. Got it. So when you sneeze or you cough, that's usually how the virus exits your body. Um, There's invisible water droplets or body fluid that comes out, and it's up to about three feet. Got it. And that's your area of concern. Now, today, if you sneeze in a occupied room, everyone's going to give you a dirty look. Sure. No. <laughs> uh, I do suggest you sneeze downwards towards the ground. We don't want any of um, the sneeze to go towards any high touch surfaces, which would be tables, chairs, anywhere else. Even sneezing into your arm, that's fine, but it can also go other places. Got it. Um, you can't control yourself if you're about to sneeze. Um, I have a good habit of just putting my head towards the ground next to my chair and sneezing downwards. Got it. Um, Not everyone would agree with me. I think a lot of people like their elbow, but now those elbow bumps don't look as attractive. (laughs) Everybody's doing elbow bumps. I mean, I started, there was a funny video last week and people were like, no, no, no. They're like uh, 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 kicking their legs, like, you know, kid and play. And I was like, that's kind of cool actually. Or the Spock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so limiting contact. Uh, you don't know what's what's contaminated. Okay. So let's talk about this. So after I sneeze in an open area, um, the virus comes out in the droplet and lands on a surface. This is not an airborne virus. It is only suspended in the droplet and then it lands. And so there's two important terms here I want to touch on. One is lifespan and that's the amount of time the virus can live outside of a host on a surface. Got it. And then we're gonna talk about the incubation period. And that's the amount of time you are hosting the virus Mm -hmm. and it's reproducing in your body, but you don't know it yet. Got it. So lifespan, the lifespan of a virus on a surface depends on many factors. We talked about the environment around you. Uh, It likes hard surfaces, non-porous surfaces there is a layer of uh, life and organic material typically on these surfaces that give it moisture to live on. Hmm. So it'll live longer on this table we're sitting at versus on your shirt. Got it. Which is porous fabric, much more dry. Got it. So uh, with typical lifespans of these viruses, uh, HIV, for example, would typically die instantly upon sunlight. The typical influenza virus dies in about 24 hours. COVID-19, we're up to about two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks. Without finding another host? It'll hang out all on its own. So it is what's called an enveloped virus, which means it's got a little protection layer around it. Uh, that protection layer is very sensitive to chemicals and heat, 
which means it makes it easier to kill than an unenveloped virus. Got it. Uh, but that, vi- that envelope can also help it survive a bit longer outside of a host. So most viruses do not have an envelope? They're not enveloped, or is there's that correct? both. Okay. There's both, and when we, the first thing we do when we hear about a new virus, we say, is it enveloped or not? Got it. Uh, the same thing with bacteria. There's spore-forming bacteria, and not. So there's bacteria that actually has a shell of what I consider to be armor around it. Right. So when we talk about these bacteria that are getting more resistant and stronger, that's one of the ways that they're getting stronger is they're f- they're forming a protective layer o- around themselves. And in fact, one of the most difficult uh, to get rid of in hospitals is C. diff. Uh, My grandmother went into a hospital uh, here in the Bay Area. She went in for an asthma treatment and she passed in four days. Wow. Because she contracted C. C. diff. She contracted at the hospital? At the hospital. Wow. And so uh, the C. diff uh, is a spore forming bacteria and it can live on a surface. They've tested it from five to nine months. Wow. Without a host. Without a host, just hanging out because it's got the spore around it. It's got wow. a protective layer. It's got its own little environment in there. And so they could be cleaning, say, the top of this surface, but it's hiding underneath somewhere. And somebody picked it up um, and it got into her body or a nurse's hands. I don't want to get into infection prevention in healthcare, sure. but the point is that um, there's a lot of other bacteria that can live a long time. Anthrax yeah. can live tens or hundreds of years. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I remember that scare. The uh, politicians were getting mailed in the, yeah? in the, but you could see it. Correct. Right? Was well, it, like, it looks or, like a powder. It looks, so uh, anthrax was a powder or what did they, was that virus in a, they put it in a powder? It's Got invisible. It. You can't see these things at a microscopic level. MRSA lasts about seven days. Wow. Uh, so. Yeah, staff lasts a long time. So. so visually, from what I've seen in uh, the coronavirus, the, it, it has these spores that come up and it's their protection, so that, that makes it the envelope. That's the envelope. Virus. That's great. Yeah, it looks like a shell with these little spikes on it. Does that happen once it finds a host or does that happen it's always, always there? there? Yeah. And how fast is it procreating? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Is it, is it procreating faster once it finds a host? Oh, yeah. 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 Remember, it can't reproduce outside of host. That's right. So so let's jump into uh, incubation period. Okay. So the moment I touch this desk because you're infected and you sneezed, and then I take my hand and I rub my eye because I've had a long day at work and I'm tired, mm-hmm. um, boom, I'm infected. And then the incubation period starts, and it ends when I start to show clinical signs of uh, symptoms, physical symptoms. I start coughing, I get a fever. Mm -hmm. Those are symptoms. So with COVID-19, they've measured that up to about two weeks also. Okay. So during that two weeks, the virus is reproducing in my body. Got it. Um, There's a part of that incubation period when I'm not infectious, and then there's a part where I am. And that's why it's so challenging because we can have healthy, seemingly healthy people walking around, right. touching surfaces, coughing, thinking they're fine, um, share, moving their um, body liquid in some way, and it lands somewhere and the next person picks it up. So I don't want to be an alarmist, but anyone right now, obviously, if you're show, showing signs of being sick, Um, Don't go to work, but Mm -hmm. please understand that you could be infectious even though you're not showing signs yet. When you see these people going into restaurants and they're checking their temperatures, there's a chance they could already be infected. So it's not a foolproof way to rely on signs and clinical signs and symptoms to say whether you have it or not. But it is a sign. I mean, uh, I think it it was in China uh, a a month ago, and people were going into buildings and they had the heat... um, lamps or whatever they were they were testing if people had the thermometer fever, the yeah th- it's a laser th- thermometer yeah, incredible yeah. i'm like wow they're ahead of it uh, we sure. don't have that right now right yeah do we we, we, we have it? the technology sure yeah. we do um but again it's a little late mm-hmm. you don't want to go off that solely uh, between having this long lifespan and people walking around that may be infectious there's a concept called assumption of risk. Just assume everything's contaminated and behave accordingly. 
when I walked into your building today and I grabbed the handle, I thought about it. I said, hey, that could be contaminated. No. But it's on my hand now, and I'm not touching my eyeballs. And Got I'm it. not picking food out of my teeth. I'm not picking my nose. Got I'm it. not touching my face because I just assume I might have it. And until I use the restroom and wash my hands, I'm not going to put my hands in a sensitive area on my body. Got it. Got it. So assume everything has it and yeah. act accordingly. I mean, I thought of that before you came. I was like, I wanted to do like a deep cleanse. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it's it's real. Yeah. So. You're going to want to do it as soon as we're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, the biofilm on these surfaces. I just want to touch on it. I want to touch, talk about high-touch surfaces. What are high-touch surfaces? Okay. And so if you imagine throughout a building, you've got doorknobs, you've got the um, armrests on a chair, tables, reception area, ATM. Imagine if you're checking out of the grocery store. Uh, that little plastic pen to sign your name after you use a credit card, how many people have touched that? Uh, you can also think of maybe uh, the avocado and everyone's touching those avocados trying to feel if they're ripe or not. Yep. Uh, you sit down at a restaurant and they hand you the menu that's you know in plastic cover and they've been wiping that with a dirty rag for a couple months. Oh yeah. So you start to think of all these high touch areas. It could be a hand ra railing going down a stairway, mm -hmm. uh, elevator buttons, anything that people are touching constantly, uh, they develop a layer of biofilm and that biofilm allows the viruses to last longer. And we just always want to assume it's there. And then it's on your hands. And then the only way it's going to get into your, your body is if your hands touch your face. Got it. You can also pick up food with your hands and eat that and then it transfers to the food into your body. Got it. Okay. You can go home and grab your kid's face and give him a kiss mm. without washing up first. Mm -hmm. And you can transfer it that way. You can cough or sneeze in someone's face and they could inhale it mm -hmm. because in that moment, those, particul th those particulates are airborne as they enter their breathing area. Got it. So a question, uh, a lot of people, you know, especially of uh, Asian background, they, they've been wearing masks for a long time, but they were saying that masks really aren't helping. Uh, are they, is it better to wear a mask? The reason, the, yeah. So the reason they're wearing masks is if they cough or sneeze, it doesn't leave their immediate space. Wow. Okay. They're protecting other people. They're protecting other people. They're not protecting themselves, which is almost a cordial effort yeah. on their part because they've been through this so much. Their government has taught them over and over how to keep it contained and how to reduce the spread. They also understand incubation period. That's incredible. That's, uh, I mean, they, they just don't, we don't have any uh, much of a personal history with it. So yeah. we just ass assume others. Right. And I think our, our eyes are even more of a concern, um, a, a way for the, the virus to get into our body. I've been watching people and people touch their eyes a lot. Yeah. Yeah. with their their hands after walking through a building they they do a little wipe in the eye mm -hmm. and um, i see them touching their eye more than i see them touching inside their mouth is there anything visible a visible symptom through your eyes like you know like you get pink eye and you get pink and it's pink eye, it's right no, no nothing nothing uh, in the virus transferring is it i mean does it love that mucus that's you know mm -hmm. okay it so likes saliva. the wet yeah exactly that's it's like a slip and slide right into your body. Wow. <laughs> so if I'm picking my nose in my car driving alone, I've transferred something, for example, from my finger to inside my nostril. And then I breathe in, and that gets kicked up into mm -hmm. my mucous membrane in my nose. Wow. And then it absorbs into my body that way. So uh, uncomfortable question and uh, probably uncomfortable answer, but sexually, is it you're, are you more susceptible because of that? Yeah, same thing. It's, it's an open um, area to the body, and it can go right in. I'm going to be a monk for the next three <laughs> months. Uh, I just did this with, went through this with a friend, and he was very upset. <laughs> so um, it's any contact with body fluids. Got it. So. Okay. So that's transmission and infection. Uh, how germs enter your body or no? We yeah, um, we un we talked about that. Just mm -hmm. don't touch your face. One thing I want to talk about touching your face because uh, I've been training on this for over a month now. I noticed it's such a bad habit for people touching their face. 
And around my office, we help each other out and we remind each other when we see someone else doing it. Got it. So you just break the habit. Um, remember the woman on um, the TV where she licked her finger to turn a page right after yeah. she said, don't touch your face? <laughs> um, you know, we think it's funny, but it's hard to kick. Sure. I was just training on this earlier today with a group of CEOs and the guy's listening to me on this exact slide and he's got his finger touching his lip and he's just holding it there. Did That's, you like call him out? Oh yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I, it's good to help it, use it as an example Got it. and people need to start changing the way they're thinking. Yep. So remind your, your friends and family when you see them doing it, it's completely subconscious and the more stress people get, the more they do it. It's yep. really an interesting. Well, it's Habit. an interesting thing as a social experiment. Uh, you know, people are uh, behaving, they're, they're scared right now, so they're behaving in a different way. Uh, I know my um, uh, clients and friends that are from Asian de descent, especially uh, Chinese, uh, there's xenophobia out there right now. And they're like, oh, you, they're kind of blaming them. And it's like, they're that's American. It's, but that's a reality of what's going on right now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, be kind to one another. This is not a Chinese problem. It's it's a global thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, that's something. Viruses don't discriminate. Viruses <laughs> do not discriminate. They, that's good to know. A host is a host. So let's talk about washing our hands and hand hygiene. Now that we are assuming everything we're touching is contaminated, it's on our hands. Therefore, we're not going to touch our face or any other bodily openings. Uh, we need to assume our hands are always contaminated. They've done studies of normal hand washing, and the CDC right now is telling us, wash your hands for 20 seconds often. Mm -hmm. I is need that to, enough? I need to take it a step further Got because um, there is something called an eight-step hand washing process. And during the hand washing process, typically we are washing our hands like this. And again, you asked me this 60 days ago, mm -hmm. and I was completely guilty of this. Washing your hands, I'll go like this, and I'm done. Mm -hmm. I grab a paper towel, I use the air dryer, and I'm out of there. Ten seconds. I got things to do. Yep. Uh, today, I'm going through an eight-step process, and I'm getting all parts of my hands, all of them. The most missed part when we wash our hands is especially the back of our hand. And so we have this thumb area, and your thumb goes all the way up to your wrist. And so we usually never get our thumb. And so you wanna make sure when we're washing our hands now, we get our whole thumb. We usually never get the backs of our fingers, mm -hmm. always missed. And even inside our fingers between. And we especially hardly ever get the pinky and the outside of the hand here. And imagine you're writing, yep. that's the side of the, your hand that's down mm -hmm. um, on surfaces. And so that's where a lot of it gets picked up. Got it. And then you put your hand here, and then you put your fingers, and then it touches it, and then you touch your eyeball, and it just moves everywhere. Well, a lot of us are on our laptop, right? So yeah. the, that back side. Um, but it's a, laptops and phones are kind of personal. Uh, but the, it seems like I was looking at my phone, and the screen was all dirty. I'm like, this thing has something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's biofilm. When you start to see fingerprints, kind of like crud, mm -hmm. you know, something, a layer of a film. Yep. That's, that's a lot of funk that's sitting there, and that's where everything's hanging out. For the record, that's funk. That that's is not, funk. That doesn't mean it's enveloped. Yes. <laughs> we'll get straight to the point. It's funky funk. Yeah. Um, so, so we're not washing our hands long enough or thorough enough. Uh, Walk us through the eight steps. Yep. So we're gonna, the first step is obviously rubbing your hands together. By the way, soap and water is all you need. Okay. What we're trying to do is wash the virus down the drain. You don't need to kill it. Okay. We're at this point, you're trying to wash it down the drain. Does that mean it's gonna wash into the bay? Can it live there? <laughs> it I mean, can't live there. okay, no, okay, good. You're fine. So um, we're gonna then rub our fingers with palm to palm, get between your fingers. And when I train on this, I usually have my team do it with me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to just do it, and then when you're alone in the bathroom, you end up remembering it. If you walk around my facility at Ideal, we have this plastered in front of every sink. Got it. If it's there in front of them, people will do it. And then you want to hit the back of your hands and you want to rub through the back of your hands on your fingers. And that's where you can get the outsides of your hands mm -hmm. on the, um, uh, the, the pinky and hand area. And then you want to hit your whole thumb 
again, the dirtiest part of a hand is probably the back of your thumb and you want to get the whole thing. And then the next step, um, this is a lot about friction. So you need your two surfaces rubbing together. We usually miss this part as well. And so we're going to rub it on our palm. Okay. the backs of our fingers in a circular motion to create a lot of bubbles. You're going to feel the bubbles come up. Okay. And while you're there, imagine uh, all the funk around your nail beds, mm -hmm. all inside there. And so you want to rub your nails on your palm too. And then you want to get your wrists, go all the way up to your wrists. And then you want to rinse off. You won't have to count by the time you're done with this process. Hopefully 30 to 40 seconds have passed. So usually uh, it, this is pretty much a minute process, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're doing it right, uh, you're not going to be thinking about counting. You're going to be thinking about doing a good, thorough job. Yep. You're going to see dirt in the sink that you didn't even know was on your hands. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take a paper oh. towel and you're going to wipe off your hands. I like paper towels. Yep. It's an extra friction point. Anything that you might have left behind will hopefully get transferred onto that towel, yep. and you toss it. As opposed to uh, the Dyson that you your hands are being oh, dried. Yeah, we're not a big fan of Dyson. Period. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, one the 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 I probably even shouldn't even mention this, but the air blade uh, in bathrooms mm -hmm. uh, where you stick your hands in there and then you slowly pull them out. Yep. So there's a reservoir at the bottom of that where all the dirty, funky water lands. And it stays. And it out. stays, and it grows bacteria. Wow. And the air is shooting down at it, making it airborne, and kicking it right back up into your face. Because it's like splashing it, basically, yeah. right? And coming back up. And then up. The, it's wow. coming back up. Wow. So I just cleaned a school uh, three weeks ago for norovirus, mm -hmm. which is a gastrointestinal type of a sickness. It's mm -hmm. a stomach flu, diarrhea and vomiting. And uh, the janitorial staff there was mopping up the vomit and spreading it around. Right. Think. And then they put a fan down because oh, the floor was wet. And so they've got these invisible water droplets now kicking up and they didn't, sand, they didn't apply a disinfectant. They just didn't understand what they were doing. So we don't want to put a fan against dirty water because it. it can kick it up. And then you have it airborne only for as long as the water droplets in the air and then it'll come back down. It won't stay airborne. So this is a little different from like water damage. You know, we've done work together and seen your sites where you guys uh, do the cleanup and uh, and then you dry it off. Mm -hmm. So you're not using those at all in this process. No, you got it. yeah, there's very little airflow. We do have some um, air filtration devices. If uh, the solution we're using needs to be filtered out a little bit, it's a little bit of a heavy uh, chemical sometimes in the air, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll help filter the air that way. But that's the only time we'll do that. Got it. So just as reminders, we want to assume everything's contaminated. You want to wash your hands as often as you can. Um, we're going to touch on hand sanitizer. I'm not a big fan. We don't want you touching your face or other people's faces. What are we calling that? The triangle? The triangle. <laughs> I don't know what the you want. The triangle of truth. <laughs> the, the. We talked about getting good rest and being in good health so your immune system's always up. Take yep. care of yourself. Don't stress out. This is going to pass. Uh, and wash your hands before and after using the bathroom or eating. You talked earlier about other openings in your body. Mm -hmm. When we use the bathroom, we do have a chance of touching something sure. and so we can contract it that way too. Got it. So again, I'm knowingly setting my team into contaminated buildings. They are required to wash before they use the restroom. I mean, they show it in, uh, it's funny. I kind of, I used to like be like, oh, look at this guy. I see somebody who works at a restaurant and mm -hmm. they don't wash their hands. And if I saw that now, I'd be like, dude, that's ridiculous. You put yeah. everybody in danger, danger right? So, Absolutely. Okay. Especially considering the incubation period, they don't know if they're sick. So one test that we did today, and I heard this, you know, through the grapevine, it was uh, hold your breath for 10 seconds. If you don't cough, uh, that's a good sign. Is that? So what you're testing for there is uh, physical symptoms. Yep. So you're still too late. Yeah. You it. won't know, I believe, unless you probably take the, the actual COVID-19 test itself. Which is not really readily available no, today. Not at all. Got it. So again, back to the assumption of risk. You can just assume, hopefully you don't get sick 
um, but you want to just stay healthy and just assume everyone else is sick too. Assume you're sick. I had a good friend of mine yesterday. He's going to go see his father for uh, his birthday, and he's 85 years old. Wow. He says, should I go? So I ran him through the training, and I said, do you still feel comfortable going? He says, absolutely. Now I understand mm -hmm. how not to get him sick just in case I have it. So he's not going to, you know, washing his own hands, making sure he doesn't cough or sneeze around if he mm -hmm. does clean it up. Uh, just being careful about anything that may transfer from him to them. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go into complete isolation. Uh, but that was a decision he made. There's a hot term being uh, out right now, and it's called the social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, what is uh, the appropriate distance and how does it work? Yeah. So I mentioned the three feet sneeze. Yep. Um, that's really all I can say. I, I, you know, I'm going to visit my mom this afternoon. I'm just, I'm very cognizant and careful about what I do in her space. Yep. Um, she is 70 and so she's more of the at risk side. Um, so we just need to be careful. Kids seem to be fine. Mm -hmm. Middle-aged adults seem to be fine. Um, I think we just have to really pay special attention when we're around anyone who has um, their immune system compromised mm -hmm. or the elderly. Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, uh, they've been closing schools. My niece is out of school. The college campuses are closed. The Peninsula and the Bay Area are closing. I don't know if it changed today, but is San Francisco County still open for in schools? Um, I think they are. Yeah. That's uh, being decided, I think. By the day, I, I heard a few of their schools were closing already in San Francisco. Got it. Uh, we know all events and conferences, which we have so many in San Francisco, are closing. Restaurants are just, there's not too many people coming. From the financial and the business side, uh, how, you know, what can we do to uh, be on the offense on this versus uh, freezing and just not knowing what to do and worrying? Sure. So, if your business is being affected by this, if you can find another way to somehow uh, get through this, it's going to last a few months. Mm -hmm. uh, your best case scenario is one more month, but chances are maybe two to three more months. Yep. Best case scenario, 30 days. Yeah. Worse, or not worse, but you know, more likely, mm -hmm. two, three, four months. Yeah. 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 We're waiting to peak with the new cases and then for it to start coming back down. Mm hmm um, the businesses, I'll give you an example. There's a company I know that does uh, summer camps for children. Got it. Hit big time. Nobody wants to send their kids to these gatherings. And they would love to because these kids are... <laughs> they're going to drive their parents crazy, crazy over the next few months. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is relook at how do we bring our, our, our exciting, uh, thought-provoking uh, exercises into the home. Got it. How do, how do we share it in their home? So maybe we could get the kids away from the parents for an hour or two around the TV, uh, live stream in uh, an activity where we can take normal everyday appliances from the kitchen mm -hmm. and start building something. That's fun. So you kind of have to think outside the box. There's another company I know that does uh, school lunch deliveries. Mm. He's hurting. Yep. And I said, well, gee, you know, the cleaners out there, the janitorial teams, the restoration companies, we're working overtime nonstop with teams of 70, 80, 90 people in these buildings yeah. for 12-hour shifts. Wow. And try to feed these people is tough. What if you fed them? Yep. So if you can somehow think of how to shift and, and bring other value during this time, uh, that's the best way to do it. And um, it's like any other crisis. You also have to take care of the business first. Yeah. On the business side, let's say 2008, for example, we weren't going through something like this, but it was a financial, um, there was a big financial burden. Uh, what did you do to stay alive at that point? How did you pivot? So I am recession resistant. I typically thrive through these <laughs> tough times. Yeah. Um, it's people's fears, right? They're well, like, this, is a, this is an example. So when we have a virus outbreak, we're busy we're cleaning. Mm -hmm. When we have fires and floods and hurricanes, our industry is busy. Mm -hmm. when, um, when we have a financial crisis, people usually cut back on preventative maintenance in their buildings. Mm -hmm. So the projects actually get bigger wow. for us because we do a lot of commercial work. Right. So um, I am lucky to be in a recession resistant industry. Yeah. Um, but we also deal with our own slow times. Um, January and February this month for us was absolutely awful. Wow. 
it just slowed down. Yep. So um, it picked up mid-February. I can't put rhyme or reason to it, but if there's no disasters, we're not working. Yeah. They say no, no news is good news, right? Exactly. It's kind of the same. But uh, when you are slower, that's when the training happens. And you mentioned you have 50 people on board right now. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to train more right now? What is... What is your thought? Yeah, so so we just did infection prevention training in January, which is a big two-day course, mm -hmm. which is a lot of this topic. Um, I'm not training right now because everyone's working in overtime mode. Mm -hmm. um, our next trainings are probably going to be later in the year. Um, and we're always focused on how to dry a building faster, how to do it safer, mm -hmm. how to save our clients money. Got it. And so you're spending a lot of time with your existing clients and potential clients in education side right now. Correct. You're doing this with a lot of people. What is the feedback right now? Um, because this is information. There's the internet's a funny place, and mm -hmm. everybody's passing around things that may not be true. And that's the, w the main reason I wanted to contact you. And uh, connecting those dots, I feel like a lot of these things we did not know or weren't. I mean, the eight-step process of washing the hands. That's something we c that should be in every bathroom. Exactly, especially right now. <laughs> I mean, we should go and print yeah. up and go to every yeah. bathroom and Google the eight steps of hand washing. Yeah. So the the real takeaways for our clients, um, they want to share understanding of how uh, viruses go from place to place, which is understanding what we just talked about. But they're also very interested in the disinfecting part, which mm -hmm. I want to jump into next. Got it. So disinfecting is what we do when we have a virus, a bacteria, and we need to get rid of it. A virus can't actually be killed. It's only deactivated. The virus isn't quote unquote alive to begin with. So we typically don't use the word killed. I'll use it with you just for mm -hmm. layman discussion. Sure. Uh, but I just wanted to lead with that. Um, we don't sanitize, we don't decontaminate, we disinfect. disinfect. So that's the language we want to use here. So when we go into a space, we talked about the biofilm. If you have a big a, a, a bio load on that surface, we call it, we need to clean the surface first. Mm -hmm. I need to get the gunk off, the funk off, in order to disinfect the surface. And so we do gross cleaning we call it. So we're gonna use soap and water and we're gonna clean the surface. Got it. And then we're gonna dry the surface. And then we're gonna take an EPA registered disinfectant. We're gonna talk about which disinfectants to use. Yeah, I mean, I can't just knows. take a little wipe and wipe it down and it's all good. Those I mean. little Clorox wipes aren't gonna save you. Uh, so we wanna clean the surface. And let me give you a visual. So I just finished my breakfast. I had two eggs over easy. On Yum. my plate, yummy, a piece of toast. Was it a Nini's? <laughs> it should have been. should have been. <laughs> and so I finished the whole plate. I sopped up the yolk with my toast. And I'm done. Mm -hmm. That plate, if I wanted to disinfect it, I couldn't. Because imagine the yolk is there. Mm -hmm. That layer. And you could have a virus hiding in the yolk. Okay. So me spraying a chemical on that plate isn't gonna do the trick. I have to wash the yolk off first, and then I can spray my disinfectant. Got it. So that's a good visual. You wanna think of, of any table or surface mm -hmm. that might be high touch, like you might have a layer of, of invisible uh, biofilm there that you wanna remove as much as you can so the disinfectant can do its job. Got it. So at that point, but you're still, you're, uh, you're still spreading it around and mm -hmm. once you're washing mm -hmm. it, right? You yep. need to go through those extra mm -hmm. steps, okay? Mm -hmm. And you could use a disposable towel, mm -hmm. a paper towel. You wanna wipe the surface, um, toss it, and then uh, you wanna dry the surface. The reason you wanna dry it, because when they test these chemicals with the EPA, it's, it's on a stainless sanitized piece of, of st stainless steel. They spray it, it's dry when before they spray it. So you want it mimic the conditions. Got it. You want as clean as you can get it, and then you want to spray it. The next point is where everyone goes wrong. You have to spray this evenly up across the surface, and it has to sit wet. So, it, it's, okay, you get a spill and something's going on, you're cleaning it up, and, and you use a wipe, and you uh, and, and it just stays wet. I mean, I'm sorry, it stays dry. That's not good enough. It should stay wet for more than yep. 30 seconds a minute so we want to clean it before we can kill it yep. so you want to clean the surface 
off first mm -hmm. if you need to, if it's dirty. And that's what soap. Soap and water soap will do. Water, you yeah. want to you want to clean that surface, and then you want to spray your disinfectant. And it has to sit wet. And I'm telling you, most of the products off the shelf for the consumer, it can be up to five to ten minutes, which is mind blowing because who does that? Nobody. What janitor Nobody has does time that? For that? Nobody's going to spray it and sit there and watch the clock and let it sit wet. Okay. But if you go to the labels of these chemicals, and I'll show you exactly where to find this information, mm -hmm. they're always tested against a virus or a bacteria. And they talk about dilution ratio. If you have to mix the chemical, some mm -hmm. you do, or others are ready to use. Mm -hmm. And then they talk about the specific number of minutes that surface needs to sit completely wet with the product on it in order it for it to kill the virus. Oh, so they already have this. It's already been tested. Wow. So the information's out there. It's just not easy to find for the average consumer, which is the challenge. It's not on their website? By it law, do they have to? It's not on the chemical company's website. They don't have to have it on there? They, not, I trust wow. the EPA. Yeah. A lot of these chemical companies are really good at marketing. And oh. um, I just brought in disinfecting wipes with me today. Mm -hmm. I showed you over there. And uh, it's an example, it's a wipe, and on the front of it, it says kills 99.99% of bacteria in 30 seconds. I mean, to any, uh, that's like, uh, yeah, great. That's a so very low. So I went online, uh -huh. epa.gov, there's a search bar, and I enter the EPA registration number, which is on the back of the product. And it's simple to find, I pulled up the label. Now when I say label, you might be thinking of a sticker that's on the back of a bottle. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the EPA website, the label's 50 plus pages long. Wow. Again, <laughs> very difficult for the consumer to find. By, I mean, that's by, by blueprint. Correct. Then, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so we go in there and we find it. And then, and I'll take Clorox, for example. I've got uh, Clorox as an example here. We'll go on the EPA's website. I look up Clorox. It's a 50-page document. I scroll through every page. I see how to do laundry, how to disinfect seeds that I'm growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stuff's used for everything. And then yeah. eventually on page 41, I find the viruses. Wow. And so it's been tested for all these different viruses, and um, it, lo and behold, it says to disinfect hard porous surfaces, clean the surface, mix your solution, and then thoroughly wet the surface with the solution and allow it to re remain in contact for five minutes. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find this on the back of the bottle. Right, not at all. And this is how they've tested, and look what's here, human coronavirus. Does that say uh, 10? And I will tell you, this is not COVID-19. Nothing's been tested for COVID-19 yet. We're making our best guesses in this industry. Uh, but we understand the virus. It's similar to a SARS. We understand it's an enveloped virus. We can make these assumptions and know um, what can deactivate other viruses similar to it mm -hmm. and make our best guess what's going to work on this one. Got it. If you take nothing away from this discussion with me, I want you to understand dwell time. Time. And I need you to go to the epa.gov website. Every bottle, every solution, everything you have has a EPA registration number on the back. Go in and enter the number. How does this differ from the cleaning products that are, you know, on our shelves versus like some organic stuff that, you know? Yeah, there are orga organic products that, that do work. Got it. So I'm going to also tell you about another document that came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it came out on March 3rd. It is the EPA, uh, the EPA's registered antimicrobial products for use against the coronavirus or COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It was published by the EPA. Uh, and essentially, this is for emerging pathogens. That's what we call new, new, no, emerging. new things. We don't know what to do yet. Like an emerging artist, you know, that's not going to play at Coachella this year. <laughs> and so on this list, you've got to look it up online. Chemicals to use on emerging pathogens. These are all approved. There's a registration number here on the left. Um, you can click right on. This is where all the approved chemicals are. And is there like a handful, maybe? Uh, I'd say there's about 50 on 50, here. Okay. Maybe more. And this is in the on the EPA website. It's on the EPA website. Uh, and then you can click on the label, 
and you'll see here's, there's examples of some of these labels. They're very long. And you can start to see some of the, uh, the organisms it's been tested against and then the contact time. Mm -hmm. Some of them you can get a contact time of one minute. Some are five minutes. But you have to know what you're trying to deactivate or kill in order to know what the dwell time is. Okay. I know I'm getting boring and scientific on you, but the ch challenge with these Clorox wipes, we'll take this for example, if we wipe the surface of your table here and I stare at it, it'll be dry in 10 seconds. Sure. So essentially I'm hoping the virus can also transfer from the surface onto the towelette. Mm -hmm. That's another way to remove it. Can you call that a, another touch point, right? Or another like another um way to remove it yeah well you you said something because it was like a paper towel you like yeah. using paper it's another towels friction over point. another friction yes point. I like that. yeah so the more friction yeah. points the better yep and yeah. and wipe it try to get it on try to kill it on the surface and as an extra wipe it got it so uh the last step in disinfecting is wiping the surface okay so anything you might have left behind that didn't die or get deactivated, you use that last towel. That is a and dry wipe it. towel. A dry towel, you're trying to leave a dry surface and hopefully something gets transferred onto that last Paper towels? Wipe. Paper towels fine? are great. Okay. Toss them. Um, we are a big fan of, in our industry, of microfiber, mm -hmm. um, but we dispose all of the microfiber so it's not economical for the average person. Got it. Well, because microfiber, the microfiber towels, they last longer for a reason. Do they, are they, uh, inhabit a lot of this then if they're if we because we reuse them all the time in general yeah. most people do so um, in my home yeah. I have microfiber and I wash and dry them and I reuse them in a hospital they're one use got it what happens if you look at the microfiber underneath a uh, microscope micro micro <laughs> uh, they've got little fingers hmm. And those little fingers are what helps grab those little small pieces. Mm -hmm. Once you keep drying that, those fingers turn in. Okay. And so they no longer grab. Uh, they've tested um, microfiber mops, cloths that have been reused. And as they come out of the um, washing machines, there is C. diff on them. C. They diff. do find bacteria on them that survive the wash cycle. Wow. Which is more mind blowing for some of us well, and these the, researchers. The, the washer, I mean, you, that's like a hundred and something degrees, yeah. right? I mean, the water temperature is pretty high. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, in hospitals, in when we work in these hospitals, they get disposed. So I want to make another point to another consideration. A lot of the products that we use at this level of cleaning and disinfecting have a six log reduction or a six log kill. Um, and that refers to the number of nines. 99.9% .9 is a three log. 99.99% is a four log. We are typically looking for chemicals with six log. Wow. Most of your bleach spray bottles say 99.9. .9, so that's a three log. So the more nines you can get, the better. Don't be fooled just because you think it's got 99.999. .99. You want as many as you can get. So that's not just a marketing thing, or usually it is because on every big bottle that it's I disinfect, that number is given to them by the EPA. The EPA, okay. The and EPA do they allows them to use a specific. They say you're allowed to use this many nines. Got it. So if there was like a, 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 a 99.9 .9 times nine, that would be a C C nine C log nine. Is that correct? It's a, that a six exists. log. Is six what log we call it goes it. up to. Okay. Yeah. Um, the best stuff you can get would be an EPA registered hospital grade tuberculoside disinfectant. Wow. And you'd be surprised what you can find on Amazon. <laughs> you don't have to go into the black market for that. No, you can find it on no, Amazon. No, you're looking for a six lock kill. Um, you're looking for those six or hopefully even five nines. But that's not at the grocery store or at Costco, correct? No. Got it. No. Yeah, look a little deeper. So some common issues when we're trying to uh, disinfect, we are not measuring out our dilution ratio. Pay attention when you have to mix products, do not eyeball it. There's a reason they put the measurements on there. It needs the water. Uh, to when activate. I, to activate it. You're not making a stronger solution by adding more chemical. It doesn't work that way. That's really good to know. Yes, that's a common mistake. Yeah. In fact, you make it less strong. Hmm. It can't do its job without the water. Wow. 
So don't mess around with those dilution ratios. Trust the EPA, trust the label and the EPA. The EPA beats the heck out of these guys. Okay. It is not easy to get your products approved and with these uh, uh, statements that we can put out there. Mm -hmm. uh, also know the, the shelf life. After you mix a disinfectant with the water, it has a shelf life. Trying to find the shelf life of a mixed product is more difficult than finding the dwell time. So on page 72, somewhere? So when we mix, we use it all. Okay. So um, hmm. I, Once you open it. Yeah, we mix what we're going to use in that facility that day. Got it. And don't top off uh, solutions because that also messes with the, the, the ratio of water to chemical. Uh, don't mix cleaning chemicals with disinfectants. I that's had, not going to be make it better. That's, that's not going to. So I, I had a janitor the other day say, well, can't I pour the disinfectant in the soap and just do a one step process? Remember, you have to clean before you can kill. Got it. And then, of course, lack of training and, and understanding is always a challenge. How often do you are you going on locations and the janitor is just like, oh, don't worry about it. I got this. You guys. It's startling um, that janitors don't know what we know. Um, but they're, after this, they're going to be much more educated. Uh, there is times that they want to do it themselves, which is fine. Mm -hmm. So it, it happens a lot. Yeah. What are you doing to embattle this? I mean, you, and you let me know if we can talk about this, but you are, you've been investing a lot and spending a lot of time. You are five years ahead of the game right now. You've been disinfecting hospitals and schools and buildings for this long. And this is like really the first time that's like a huge need for it. Mm -hmm. I feel great. I feel ahead of the game. Um, I feel good because I've invested so much money already that I'm just glad we're, we're ready for this and it's paying off now. Uh, but I'm also excited that everyone else is going to get up to speed on, on the importance of this and at yep. this microscopic level, what's going on? Uh, sometimes you feel like nobody cares. Nobody cares that people are getting sick. Um, so, you know, if you look at a silver lining on this, it's going to bring to light that we need to be more educated. Why aren't we teaching children in school about this and proper hand washing? Uh, why doesn't the average person understand how you know a virus is just transmitted into a body outside of the healthcare world? So, what's the happy medium of you know between hypochondriac versus you know being sure. a responsible adult? Yeah. So, as much as I know, I go to the grocery store, I go to restaurants. I'm just more aware of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I, my whole company comes to work every day. We do cleaning, we do training, we're careful about it. Um, so I say, don't be a hypochondriac. Don't lock your stuff, yourself up. Mm -hmm. um, live your life. Uh, follow recommendations by the government. They're trying to do, um, they're trying to slow the spread. They don't yep. want to overwhelm our hospitals. China went through a big peak and overwhelmed their hospitals. So they're just trying to spread it out. Mm -hmm. It's still going to run its course. What are you seeing right now? And like I said, I feel like yesterday was like really day one in America, in the, in the U.S. Uh, at least. Uh, the, a ban on uh, any country from Europe, I think, except for U.K. Um, but there's no traveling going on. I joked yesterday that I said we should go to like New York for lunch, right? And tickets yeah, are so cheap. Sure. <laughs> or, you know, out of the country or whatnot. Yeah. But there's, is it still like, I mean, the same applies, right? We we should be going out to. How can we support businesses and, and still feel uh, safe? Sure, go go shopping. Be, pay attention to what you're touching. Wash your hands. Go to a restaurant. Maybe eat cooked food instead of raw food if you're concerned about the cook in the back. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can do things. Order in from home. Order cooked food. Um, so what about raw foods? Let's say sushi, you know, like, is there, sure, I, I love sushi. I know you do too. Sure. Like, is that something we could, is it more susceptible than like a cooked piece of chicken? So I say chicken? cooked only because um, the, it's been handled. Got it. And, and heat will kill the virus. Mm -hmm. At that cooking le level, heat will cook. Excuse me. Um, the, the, the virus won't be active. Mm -hmm. The heat's going to kill it, deactivate it. Um, that's why I say raw. If we get to a point where it really becomes a big deal around our neighborhood, you do you might want to consider just not eating raw food mm -hmm. at a at a restaurant. 
Yeah. I don't want to invoke fear. I don't think we're there yet. Yeah. I had a salad for lunch at a restaurant. Uh, but it's just something to think about and, and consider. And go out there, wash your hands, don't touch your face, yep. and uh, just kind of keep, keep a distance from people. So I believe that true leaders really step up in times like these, and they don't freeze. They don't, uh, you know, they don't find all the negative things that are going on. What can true leaders and business owners do right now? What's the best thing that they can do? Uh, starting point for their own businesses. If you're struggling, try to yeah. If, if you're struggling, try to pivot. Mm -hmm. Try to find something where you can still make money. Yeah. Um, it's going to be tough. I, and uh, I think it's also a good idea to have maybe a plan A and a plan B in mm -hmm. case things do get more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you even mentioned a plan C, right? There's like levels of yeah, this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even if, you know, in my business, sometimes we slow down. I say, hey, if it's slow for another 15 days, I might have to do my first round of cuts. Mm -hmm. What if it's slow for another 30 or 45 days? There's yeah. a second round. Uh, I hopefully don't even get to the first round, but I can think through in a calm manner instead of a, a, a reactionary way. Right, and I, I believe that's what's happening. It's a reactionary way. What can, uh, instead of reacting and totally like, oh my God, it's over, uh, what are the things can businesses do to educate their employees right now, make yeah. them feel good, because that's what we want to do. Yeah, share this with them. Um, don't freak out, wash your hands, understand how it's, it's transferred. If you can work from home, work from home. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, there's a lot of blue collar industries we can't. Mm -hmm. We want to train them as much as possible and, and hunker down and we've got to ride this out. It shouldn't last more than three or four months max. Okay. Uh, I appreciate the help from the government and, you know, whether we need to put our team on um, uh, unemployment and start start helping them get some funds in their pocket that way. Mm -hmm. um, whatever we can do to, to, to get through this. Yeah. It, it, life is gonna be back to no normal by yep. the end of the year, okay. hopefully in a few months. Yeah, hope so. But the pivoting part, I mean, as a business owner, you always need to have a plan A, plan B, plan C. Absolutely. And, you know, I wanted, for myself, I wanted to uh, really talk to the people that are out there. I had a conversation with a research, cancer research, research doctor this morning just to get more educated myself and then people from different industries and just have conversations and and go from there and then kind of you know get the facts as we right. go um, I, I'm excited for, I'm excited for you and what you bring to the table I really uh, appreciate you coming out I know you're a very hands full person right now and, thank you uh, We're you're working slammed. with some pretty big people so I'm glad um, I'm glad to to have the association with you because this is huge. I think this is gonna help a lot of people and we can Great. take this content and go from there. Great, we can come back um, for part two. Yes, Good absolutely, deal. absolutely. Well, if there's any, uh, just top of the list, yep. um, the triangle of the face, try mm -hmm. not to touch it. Mm -hmm. um, the eight part hand washing mm -hmm. uh, sanitation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, try to live a regular life. Don't get spooked, mm -hmm. you know? Just be aware and think that uh, believe that everything's already in contaminated. Mm -hmm. And uh, any, any lasting That's tip? it. Just uh, keep keep rested, keep your immune system up. And Jacqueline, how can we reach out to you and your company? Um, you can reach us at 800-3... Um, I'm sorry, 800... If they could just Google oh you, my gosh. what do they do? I don't even know our number anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Jacqueline Carpenter... <laughs> um, Ideal Restoration, IdealSF.com. IdealSF.com. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, from Visual Street Films, I'm Alonzo Rihanna, and we are out. And stay, stay, um, stay kind to each other. Um, it's nobody's fault. Let's just uh, do everything we can and uh, enjoy each other's time and uh, adjust. And let's find some solutions uh, instead of just worrying and, and buying into the hysteria, right? Um, all right, guys, stay tuned. We're out.